if you think of the kind of um, upwardly mobile middle class family like the Bavinks, who are so ambitious for their children, uh, the Voss family was was the same. Uh, so Gerhardus went to a, a similar kind of school that was a, a French language school um, um, for his secondary schooling, for his high schooling. Um, and um, so they're really similar. They, they also have an intertwined family history as well. So the Baving family came from Bentheim in Germany, on the other side of the border, from the, this denomination that's, that seceded from the, the German Reformed Church there. The Voss family uh, came from the same, the same really local area, um, had roots in the same denomination, also ended up in the Netherlands. Um, so they have so much in common, um, and they're both examples of this um, kind of social climb that you see amongst the the more um, you know socially engaged seceders who who really have high hopes for what their children will achieve and who want their children to get lots of opportunities that, that they maybe didn't have you know, before democracy came in. So they have lots and lots in common. Um, uh, I mean, the, um, I guess the most obvious difference between the two families. Um, was that from early on, the Bavink family were against emigration. Um, so emigration to the New World, whereas the Voss family were, uh, well, they emigrated, uh, as you'll know. And that's how Voss ends up in, in Michigan and then in Princeton. Um, so the, if you think back to the time when the, you know, the seceders were persecuted and also in, in, in Germany where the Bavinks and the Vosses were from, where they were persecuted, you have lots and lots of emigration, both from Bentheim in Germany and from the Netherlands to, uh, you know, to Michigan, to um, to Canada as well. And, Iowa, um, yeah. Yeah, so you have all of that kind of emigration mm -hmm. and the, some of the big questions that seceders faced before there was democracy and before there was freedom of religion, there were questions around, you know, if, if, if you face persecution in your culture in this kind of a way, um, does the reformed faith obligate you to stay or are you free to up sticks, sail across the Atlantic and, um, and move over there? And what does that mean for the, the, the society that you leave behind? Do you abandon it to unbelief? Are you, um, you, know, are you deciding, well, I'm not gonna cast my, my pearls before swine anymore? So those are really practical um, and you know, really rocked theological questions for them that affect, well, your entire life and the country that your children will grow up in, um, you know, your social prospects, all of that kind of stuff. So the Bavings from really early on are anti-immigration. Jan Bavink was anti-immigration. Uh, Herman said really harsh things about Christians who emigrated from <laughs> Netherlands to America. Um, you know, the, for him, this was like the worst thing that you could imagine. Um, to uh, and it was far worse than just being a you know a bit pietistic in the Netherlands and staying there, but ignoring the world around you. If you're if you're not even there doing that, um, the worst thing that you can do is abandon the whole thing to unbelief and move to America. Um, and the Voss family obviously were different. Um, so they they did emigrate, and um, you know their lives, Herman's life and Gerhardus Voss' life take you know different um, or different directions in some ways, but I think the degree of similarity that they have and the, the closeness that they have in terms of temperaments and um, you know they really understood each other theologically. They also have all kinds of similar existential questions about where I belong. Uh, you know, for Voss, that's as a and that is as an immigrant um, in America who then. Kind of becomes American, and um, but also you know he's very much Dutch as well. Um, you know how you fit in there, and as a Dutch Reformed immigrant to America, um, you know, where should he feel most at home? Is it in the Dutch immigrant community? Um, how does he relate to Presbyterianism, which is you know so close, but is also a different branch of the confessionally Reformed tradition? Um, you know, should he stay and teach in Grand Rapids? Should he move to Princeton? Where is his institutional home? Um, and around the same time that, that that Voss has all of those questions, Bavink is also asking similar kinds of questions about where does he belong mm -hmm. in the Netherlands? Um, should he stay in Kampen where he was teaching? Um, should he move to the Free University of Amsterdam? Uh, so they have all of these questions in the same phases of life. Um, they're both single for a good chunk of their early lives and were very bookish as a response to that. Um, so it's not a surprise that they understood each other very well. They had a really close relationship. It's not merely just uh, the families and then, you know, they spent time with each other just because they had to. Uh, they seem to to be very close. In fact, uh, one one gentleman, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he thought he was, was Bavink's soulmate, but yeah. uh, actually Voss was. <laughs> yeah, so um, Bavink had another friend whose who's dad was his pastor, actually, when he was in, uh, in the gymnasium as a student, and his dad was his pastor. Guy called Nicholas Dosker, who then moved to Grand Rapids to, 
be a pastor there. And um, so Bavink and this guy, Henry Dosker, were really good friends as teenagers, you know, and they were both really, really young at that point. Um, and then Voss emigrates with his father, and uh, not Voss, sorry, Dosker emigrates with his father, um, comes back to the Netherlands occasionally, but he just spends the rest of his life in America. Um, and they keep up their correspondence over the years. Um, but this guy, Dosker and Bavink, were uh, just on different levels intellectually. Um, you know, Dosker was, he was no slouch, but, you know, Bavink was just a, in a different kind of category, as was Voss. Um, but Dosker did, and he didn't really understand all the kind of changes that happened in Bavink's thought, especially when he became so influenced by Abraham Kuyper. Um, and all, you know, the Seceder Church changed a lot after Dosker had moved to America. So a lot of his questions to Bavink are questions of clarification. Um, you know, what's going on there? What's this? Um, what are these new ways that you have of thinking? And, and he didn't really understand him. Um, but Dosker then mediates Bavink a lot to the English speaking world and very much sees himself as Bavink's soulmate, as though they live kind of um, the same life on either side of the Atlantic. Which I um, I don't think that was a kind of mutual feeling from from Bavink. Right. Um, Poor Dosker. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we all have that friend who thinks that you're like this. You're the like, best oh, friend. We're, we're right. not as close as you imagine. Um, so yeah. So uh, Voss is a much more accurate um, American interpreter of Bavink than than Dosker was. 